before we start, I want you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Celeb Dirty. Here are 10 facts about Eminem's journey to sobriety. Number 10, Eminem began developing substance abuse on the set of 8 Mile. Eminem does rap about his past experiences with drugs during the early days of his career. However, it wasn't until the rapper began filming 8 Mile that his problem began growing. As the rapper revealed, he used to work 16 hours a day on set because at the time he had to record for the movie's soundtrack, the Eminem Show album, his D12 debut album, Devil's Night, and prepare to launch 50 Cent's career. 8 Mile is like basically the, the borderline for Detroit, and especially when I was growing up, the color line. Number 9, as a result, his encore album sounds heavily uninspiring and drugged. As a result of his plummeting health, his album following TES, Encore, sounds heavily uninspiring. It marks his fall from grace after such an explosive 2002. The rapper sounds extremely tired, as if he couldn't meet the high expectations of the previous album set. Plus, Encore suffered from leaks and bootlegging, resulting in tracks like Big Weenie and Rain Man. Then, 2004 happened. I don't need to go in depth into why Encore is a terrible album. Number 8. He almost dropped King Mather's album as his last goodbye to hip-hop. At one point, he even contemplated putting the mic down for good. Between 2006 and 7, rumors swirled around that Eminem was set to release his final album, titled King Mather's. The album was heavily rumored to feature his outro titled It's Been Real, where he thanks everyone from Dr. Dre to the late proof and pulls the curtain down to a closure. And he went into rehab in 2005. Eminem admitted himself to a rehabilitation center in 2005 in an attempt to get away from Venom. Addicted to sleeping pills, Eminem cancelled the European leg from his anger management tour due to exhaustion and other medical issues. During this time, the rapper also faced several legal problems. Apart from the infamous incident where he pistol whipped a nightclub bouncer for kissing his wife Kim, Eminem's uncle and aunt filed a lawsuit worth $350,000 against the rapper. At the time in 2005 when I ended up in rehab, I had to like... Number 6, at one point he once weighed 230 pounds, 104 kilograms. As a result of his substance abuse problems, Eminem once ballooned to 230 pounds around 2007. He would binge eat fast foods, take pills, and couldn't function. The coating on the Vicodin and Valium I'd been taken for years leaves a hole in your stomach. So to avoid a stomach ache, I would constantly eat and eat badly, the rap star said. he collapsed in his bathroom in 2007 and suffered from a knee injury. Later on, Eminem spiraled out of control once again. The death of his best friend and fellow rapper Proof contributed heavily to his turmoil. In 2007, the rapper was hospitalized after collapsing in his bathroom at his Detroit mansion for methadone overdose. Depressed, Eminem started checking himself into rehab in early 2008 and announced his sobriety on April 20th. Number 4, Elton John was his sponsor. In fact, it was Sir Elton John who served as a sponsor during the 12-step program for a recovering addict. The two linked all the way back to 2001, when Eminem, facing homophobia accusations, took the stage of the Grammy Awards to perform Stan with the singer, who was also openly gay. The Rocket Man would call him every week to check on him and they reunited once again backstage at the 2020 Oscar Awards. Number 3, after declaring his sobriety in 2008, M released his second autobiography. After announcing full sobriety in April 2008, Eminem took his fans into his private thoughts, shared unseen photographs and lyrics, and his private conflicts of dealing with fame, addiction, family, and heartbreak. As uncensored as the rap star himself, The Way I Am channels his inner struggle of keeping up with the fame. It was Eminem's second autobiography with the first one, Angry Blonde, released in 2000 during the Marshall Mathers LP era. Number two, his relapse and recovery albums mainly surround the theme of overcoming his addiction. M made his comeback to the rap game in 2009 with Relapse. He proved that the potty mouth king of satirizing pop was back, taking shots at Kim Kardashian, Sarah Palin, Jessica Alba, and more in its lead single, We Made You. Furthermore, the album paints his violent alter ego Slim Shady in a more sinister and darker way. In recovery, Eminem downplays the Slim Shady persona to craft a much more candid and personal record. Both albums won the Best Rap Album with the Grammy Awards. Number one, the album's single, Beautiful, was the only song to be recorded while he was still on drugs. However, there was only one track that he produced while still on drugs. Beautiful. 
Example from Relapse. Considered by many as the strongest track from Relapse, Eminem goes candid about his depressive episodes while keeping himself optimistic for the future. I wrote the first verse in half in rehab, and when I came out, I finished it, he told MTV. Every other track didn't only fit with the album, but when I listened to it, it would bring bad memories. But this brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen, because I'm sure you'll love them. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.